What's going on guys? Welcome to my Next.js crash course. So I created one of these about three years ago or so when Next was first released and a lot has changed since then. And Next has become super popular. It's actually one of my favorite new or newish technologies. I'm actually rebuilding my own website with it right now. So we're going to go through some slides, talk a little bit about what it is, what the benefits are, and then we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you how we can create a project and work with Next.js. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what you should know before getting into Next.js. You should know JavaScript, of course. Um, you should also be comfortable with React and the fundamentals like creating components, using JSX within components, passing and dealing with props, using state. So if you're not familiar with this stuff, then check out my React crash course. I just redid it. It should be the video right before this one. Um, but you definitely want to know the fundamentals of React first. All right, so let's talk about what next is because it, it, this can confuse a lot of people because you have front end frameworks, you have back end frameworks. Next is is sort of a, a combination of both. So it's classified as a React front end development web framework, and it was created by a company called Versal, formerly known as Zite, and it enables your React apps to have additional functionality such as server side rendering. That's that's the main thing that it does is it allows you to render your React applications on the server. And I'll, I'll explain more about that uh, in the next slide. It also allows you to generate static static websites. Um, so next is not something that's comparable to React itself or Vue or Angular or even a back back end framework like Express. So what it does is it builds on top of React to give you extra features that are incredibly handy, especially when it comes to production. And at this point, if you're getting into building larger React applications, you're building production apps. Next is definitely something that you're going to want to get into. All right. So I just want to talk a little bit about server side rendering and what that means. So traditionally, if you build an application using, let's say, create React app, such as we did in the React crash course, your entire application is rendered on the client side via JavaScript. So the request gets redirected through a single HTML file, then your JavaScript gets loaded and it displays your application in the browser. So this allows you to have a really fast and interactive user interface when you compare it to, let's say, an older PHP type website where the server compiles the data and uh, maybe uses a template engine or something like that, and it delivers a formatted HTML page with all your content. If it's done that way, every time you want to navigate to a new route or you want to update your user interface, you have to make a new request and reload the page. Now, even though a client side framework or an app built with a client side framework is fast and dynamic, there can be some shortcomings. And one of the biggest is SEO. If you use create react app and you open up the source code in, in your browser, you're not going to see any of your content. You're not going to see the H ones or the H twos, the paragraphs, anything like that. You'll see the main div that is later on replaced with your content via JavaScript. Now this is horrible for SEO because search engine crawlers can't pick up your content. And there's multiple ways of handling this, but Next.js does this right out of the box because the first page load is rendered server side rather than client side. Um, not only does this increase performance in some situations, but your content is also delivered directly. So if you view the page source in the Next.js app, you're going to see all of that content and so are the search engine crawlers. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the SEO of a server side application, but you still get that that, um, you know, that quick dynamic client side routing and everything else that comes with uh, a React app. Now, performance and SEO, those are great reasons to use Next.js, but there's other advantages as well. So routing is a huge one with a traditional create React app. We would have to define all of our routes with something like React Router DOM. So in Next, you can actually create a file, let's say about.js and just make it a React component, either a class or a function, and you can put it in the pages folder and then go to whatever your domain or you know localhost slash about and that page will automatically be rendered. So there's no need to use React Router DOM or anything like that. It's sort of like with PHP. If you want an about page, you just create about.php, you throw it on your server and you go to that route or that URL in your browser and it shows up. So that's uh, another great thing about next. And you can have dynamic parameters like let's say you want to go to slash post slash one or two or whatever the ID. You can do that. You just need to uh, structure your files in a certain way. And I'm going to get into that in a, in a little bit. 
Now, since your app is rendered server-side, you can also create API routes directly within the next file structure. Uh, and that's just one option. You can, of course, have an entire express backend or uh, backend using some other language or framework. You can also use like a headless CMS if you want. So there's lots of options for data, but you do have the ability to create API routes within the next file structure, which is really cool. You also get out of the box TypeScript and SAS. Uh, TypeScript, TypeScript is a super set of JavaScript that makes your code more robust. Um, you can simply change the file extensions to use TypeScript. Same with SAS. If you want to use SAS, you can change your uh, CSS extension to .scss. Another thing that you can do with Next is export a static website, similar to how you would use Gatsby, which is a static site generator. Um, static websites are really, really fast and they can run without the, you know, needing a server and they can be hosted directly from a CDN. Of course, you have certain caveats that you can't do with a static website. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, as far as deployment, you can host a Next.js website or, or application on any service that can host a Node.js app. Versal, which is the company that created Next, has its own easy to use hosting service where you can just push to with your um, with a GitHub repository or Bitbucket, wherever you uh, store your application. So that's an option you could use like Heroku, you could use any cloud host. Um, if you do export it as a static website, it can be hosted absolutely anywhere, including a CDN. All right, so that's going to do it for the slides. Now we're going to jump in. We're going to use a tool called Create Next App to generate a new project, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the Next.js website, nextjs.org, and it might look a little different depending on when you're watching this video. But if we go to the docs here, the documentation is actually pretty straightforward. It's not too much. It's not overwhelming. So if you have something that you don't understand in this crash course or something I don't mention, you can check the documentation. Uh, if we look at this getting started page, you'll see under system requirements, we do need at least Node.js 10.13 installed. So make sure you have that on your system. And then to get set up, there's actually a utility called Create Next App which is very similar to how Create React app works. It just sets up a boilerplate application for us with a, a dev server. And then you can also do a manual setup and just install everything separately. But we're going to use this tool here. So I'm going to open up my terminal and let's do npx create dash next dash app. And then whatever you want to call this, I'm going to call it next crash course. And then I'm also just going to add dash dash use dash npm because I do have yarn and npm installed and I'm choosing to use npm and it's just going to set up a boilerplate app. It's going to install react react Dom and next. All right. So now what we want to do is CD into uh, whatever you called it. I called it next JS or next crash course and then I'm going to open up my text editor from here. So I'm using VS code so we can just do code dot and now you can see all the files and folders on the side here. Now there's really not much, which which I like. Uh, it's really minimal. So if we look at the package.json, the only dependencies that are displayed here are Next, React, and React DOM. And of course, you know, Webpack and Babel, that stuff is being used, but it's all behind the scenes. It's you know, we don't have to actually deal with it. And then for scripts, we have npm run dev is going to run Next Dev, which starts our development server on uh, localhost 3000. We'll run that in a second. We have npm run build that's going to build out our site for production and then start npm start will actually run the production build locally on your machine. All right. So pretty simple package.json. Now I'm going to open up my integrated terminal here and do npm run dev. And you'll see server started on localhost 3000. We'll go ahead and click on that to open it. And it's just going to be a welcome page. Welcome to Next.js, and then just some links that go to uh, outside documentation. So what I want to do now is just look at some of these folders. So the public folder is basically your static folder. Anything that you put in here is going to be directly accessible from the browser. For instance, this this favicon right here. If I were to go to localhost 3000 slash favicon, you'll see that it'll actually show here. All right. So be aware of that. Anything you put in there is going to um, is going to show in the browser. So images, you might want to put images in here, maybe style sheets. Now there is a styles folder here. There's there's so many different ways you can write CSS with next. In fact, there's there's a flag that you could use when you run create next app. 
Um, there's a style components flag if you want to use style components, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, so here the global CSS, obviously this is global, this is spread across the entire app, and then it's recommended to, I wouldn't say recommended, but it's, it's common to have a specific CSS file for your different components or your different pages. So this is called home.module.css, and this, this applies to the home page. Now in the pages folder here, just ignore the API and the app.js for a second. This index.js, this is our home page. And if we take a look at it, it's nothing more than a React component called home. All right, and you can see we're actually importing that, we're importing styles from that home.module.css. So you could have an about page and maybe have an about CSS or whatever. Um, there's one kind of rule to this though. You can't import global style sheets directly into components. All right, this global CSS is actually being imported here in app.js, and I'll get to that in a second. But just remember that you can import, import global CSS, and when you do import directly into a page or a component, it has to, be, has to have this naming convention. So home dot, well, you can call this whatever you want, but you have to have this dot module dot CSS. Then you can import it. This could be anything you want. You could say, you know, um, home styles or something like that. You can call that whatever you want, but just make sure you call this file dot module CSS. Now I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff for now. Uh, actually, we'll keep the head there. I'll explain that in a minute. But down here, let's just have a div and get rid of everything inside of here because I think if we just if we keep too much, it gets kind of complicated. So I'm going to get rid of everything that's inside that div. And let's just have an H1 and we'll say welcome to next. Now I'm going to save that. And if I go over to my browser, that's what we're going to see. So it cleared up all that other stuff. And I'm just going to make this a little smaller. Now, one of the best things about Next is the routing system. You don't have to actually bring in a third party router. You don't have to define your routes. You simply put your pages inside of this pages folder and all your pages are React components. So let's say I want an about page. I'll create a new file here called about.js. And here I'm just going to generate a React component. And let's just put in here, we'll have an H1 and we'll say about. So I'll save that. And now if I go over to my browser and I just go to slash about, that's going to load that page. So it's as easy as that. It's kind of like how you would do with PHP when you just upload something dot PHP to the server and then you can go to it in your, you know, in your browser. And you can also do nested routes later on. I'm going to show you how we can do something like articles slash 10, which would be a specific ID for a specific article. Um, we just have to do kind of a we have to have a specific folder structure, but we'll get into that later. Now, I want to address this right here, this import head from next slash head. This is used if you want to have custom titles or uh, meta tags, maybe keywords, descriptions, things like that. So down in the div here, and it's the JSX, it's just like if you're working with Create React app, you, you have to have just a single parent element. Um, it doesn't have to be a div, it could be you know just a fragment, it could be whatever, but you can't have something below here. It has to be all within that parent element, including the head here. So let's say head, and we'll say title. And for the title, I'm gonna call this Web Dev News, like that. And let's say we wanted to have some keywords. We could do a meta tag with a name value and say keywords and then content. Let's say web development, programming, whatever. And you could put a description and whatever you want in the head. So if I save that, you see now we have a title it says Web Dev News. Um, but the other thing I want to show you is this is the source code. You can open source as you normally would, but I have this extension here. Uh, what is it? Quick Source Viewer, which just kind of cleans everything up for us. And I just want to show you that we can see in the source here, you can see the keywords we just added. And then down here, you can see the H1. That's, that's pretty much the only content we have on the page. But any content you have, all your headings, all your paragraphs, that's all going to display in the source code. And it's accessible to search engine crawlers 
where if you if you create an application with Create React App or any, you know, just any regular client side single page application, you're not going to see the content in the source code. You're going to see the main div or the main element where your content is rendered once the JavaScript loads. So again, Next.js is, is very good for SEO. All right, so let's, let's actually close that up. So if we wanted to have maybe a separate title for about. So if we go to slash about right now, it doesn't look too good. So we could, you know, take uh, actually let's just take this and import that. And then we could put head here. And of course, you could create a custom component. We'll probably do that in a little bit where you don't have to keep repeating this, you know, bringing in head. You can just bring in your uh, into your layout, which we'll create in a few minutes. You could have a custom component where you pass in the title and all that. So if I go ahead and save, now you can see that title is about. Now, as far as layouts, um, let's do that. So at this underscore app JS, this is this wraps around all of your page components. Okay, so it's just it's a function. It takes in a component, which is your your page component, your page props, and it just returns that. But we could add a layout to this if we want. We could wrap a layout around it. That way we can have a, a, a header, a footer, a, a navigation, whatever you want to show up on every page in that layout, you could add to to the layout component. And again, this is where you want to import any global styles. You don't have to do this module stuff here. If you want just a global style sheet, you could do that. You just have to bring it in here, not into a specific page or component. So what I'm going to do is create a folder called components. And this is for any components that are not pages. Okay, anytime you, you want a component where it's not going to have its own route, its own URL, you're going to put it in here. So let's create a new component and let's call it layout.js. And the convention is to use lowercase for your pages and then uppercase for any other components that you're going to use. So this layout is just going to be a React component. And let's uh, let's see, we're just going to I'm actually going to use some of the classes in this home dot module. Now, the the boilerplate just had all the styles in that one home page, right? They had the footer and all that stuff. So I'm going to actually rename this. Let's rename this to layout dot module. CSS and what we'll do is bring that into this into our layout and there's so many different ways you can do this um, style components are really cool I plan on doing a, a crash course on that on those soon so let's import layout um, not import layout we want to import styles because we're importing styles from and that's going to be from let's see up one level styles slash layout dot module dot CSS then we can go down here and we can say class name and we want to set that to some curly braces and in here we want to say styles because that's what I brought it in as and then whatever class you want to use so container all right then I'm going to have a main tag in here and let's also add a class name here and I'm going to use styles let's do styles dot main <clears throat> and of course you'd have your own styles but I'm just using kind of, you know, the boilerplates um, style sheet. So we want this to actually wrap around. If we look in our app JS again, we want it to wrap around our page component. So this is going to be passed in as a child. Okay, so we want to bring in here as props. We're going to bring in children and we want to display the content, the page content here. So here, let's say children. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And now in our app JS, I like to have the style sheets at the bottom. Let's import our layout component. So that's going to be from dot dot slash component slash layout. And then what we'll do instead of returning this directly, let's put some uh, parentheses around that. And then here we'll have our layout. And then let's move this up into here. Whoops, we don't want, want that at the end. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. 
And now you can see some of the styles have changed because in our layout we're using the container class or using the main class. And I could put some, anything I want in here, like if right above the children here, if I wanted to put H1 and just say hello and save, that's going to show. And if I go to slash about, it's going to show there as well. It's going to show on every page that that uses that layout. All right, I'm going to get rid of that, though. And then let's see back in our app JS. So that looks good. Now, as far as the styles go, there's just a couple things I want to change here. So the container instead of justify content center, let's do flex start and then on main same thing. Flex start and we'll save that. Actually, I'm also going to add font size. We'll do 1.25 rem. All right, so what I want to do now is get into links and how, how do we get to the, the about page and back to the home page. And I want to create a separate nav component that we can use and, and create a nav bar at the top. So it's going to have its own style. So first I'll go ahead and create a new file here and call it nav.module.css. And I'm just going to paste the styles in. It's not much. So it's just going to be a simple, you know, regular just nav bar at the top here. So we'll save that. And then under components, let's create a file called nav.js. And we'll go ahead and create a component here. We want to import the, the style sheet that I just created. And I'm going to import it as nav styles. Let's say from and then we want to go dot dot slash styles slash nav dot module dot CSS. All right, now down here, let's change this div into a nav and I'm going to give it a class name and set that to nav styles dot nav. And then let's put a have a UL here an LI. And then this is where I want to put my link. Now, I don't want to use an, uh, an a tag here. What we do with next is we bring in something called link Sim similar to what you would do with react or Outer Dom. So we'll say import link from and that's going to be from next slash link. OK, and then down here we'll use that link, which is going to take in an href. And this is going to go to just the index page and we'll say home. All right. And then I'll just copy this down here. We want this one to go to about. So we'll change that to about. So let's save that. Now we want to bring this into our layout because we want these these links to be on every page. So in our layout, let's go ahead and import, let's say import nav from and it's in the same folder. So just nav. And I actually want to put this above the container and stuff because I don't want it to be contained. I want it to be up at the top and go all the way across. So remember, we can't we have to return just a single element. So what I'll do is wrap this in just some empty angle brackets and then I'll put my nav here. All right. So we're still we still have just one single parent element. So if I save that now, you can see we have some navigation. If I click on about it goes right to the about page home. All right. And obviously you could add more pages and more links if you want. All right. Now I'm going to create a header that I want to display on every page. All right. So we can close up uh, app JS. So let's first create a style sheet here. So we'll create a new file called header dot module dot CSS. And I'm just going to use some of the styles from the boilerplate. Uh, let's see. So we have container main footer. I'm not going to do a footer, so I'm just going to clear up these styles. There's no need for them. And then title any class of title and description is going to be in the header. So we're just going to get these and cut those out, save that, close that up and then go into header and paste that in. And the only thing I want to add here is this color. I want to add that to a span in the title as well. So we're just going to add that. OK, so we can close that up. Let's now create a new component. So in the components folder, let's say header .js, and we'll go ahead and create our react component. And then let's import. We'll call it header styles from and that's going to be in styles slash header dot module dot CSS. Now, before I actually uh, implement any of that and the styles from that file, I want to show you we can actually 
use um, CSS in JavaScript with style JSX. So I'm just going to put a span here, let's say web dev and then news. And let's say that I want to style this H1 within within my component. So I could put a style tag here and just add JSX and then we could open up some curly braces and some back ticks and then we could define a style like let's say class of title has a color of red. And then up here we could add a class name and set that to title. And of course we can't see anything because we haven't brought the header into our layout. So let's go to layout. Let's go ahead and just copy this down and bring in header as header. And I'm going to put this I want this to be within the main tag. So basically right above the children. That's where the page is output. So here let's say header. And there we go. And you can see that it's red from this right here. Now this can get quite messy putting this right in your component. Um, you might want to do it if you have some kind of conditional conditional style. So let's say we have a variable called X. Oops. Set it to five and then down here maybe we want to do like so since we're using back ticks here we can use this syntax this money sign curly brace and we'll say if X is greater than three then let's make this red else let's make this blue. So I'll save that you can see it's red if I change this to two. Now if I save this when we do it when we do this conditional styling we actually have to reload the page. So now you can see that that is blue because of this condition. So you might want to do something like that. Um, I'm going to get rid of this though. And then for the, the header styles that we brought in, of course we want to replace this with header styles and we're going to use title here, which make it a little bigger. And then let's also add uh, we'll add a paragraph and let's say keep up to date with the latest web dev news or whatever you want to put. This needs the description class. So class name and it's going to be header styles dot description. All right, cool. So that's our header and it's going to be on every page. Okay, so even if we create another page in here, it that's going to automatically show because it's we brought it into our layout and that wraps all of our pages. All right, so we can close that up and we can actually just close all of these for now. Now, before we move on to data fetching and all that, I just want to talk a little bit about the the custom document that we can create. So if we look at the source code here and you can see that we have we have obviously our HTML head tags, body tags. We don't have that anywhere in our file structure, though, by default. Also down here, you'll see there's a bunch of scripts that are loaded, including Webpack and some other ones here. So if you want access to like, let's say we want to add uh, a lang attribute to the HTML tag, what you can do is create a custom document. And I'm actually going to bring this this documentation page over and this will tell you more about it. So a custom document is, is commonly used to augment your applications, HTML and body tags. And this if we want to override this, we can actually create an underscore document .js file in our pages directory. All right. And this is actually rendered on the server. So if we go down here, let's see. So custom attributes are allowed as props like Lang caveats. So it's only rendered on the server. So you can't have like on clicks and stuff uh, in this file. All right. And you would you probably don't really want to mess with this. I just want to show you that it is possible. So what we'll do is let's copy this because this is the, the default document. And then I'm going to go in my pages folder here and create a new file called underscore document .js. Now, if I just leave this blank, let me just close that. If I leave this blank and save, it's not going to do anything because this is actually rendered on the server. So I need to restart this. So we'll run NPM run dev again. And now when I reload, I'm going to get an internal server error. Now to fix that, I could either delete this and the default would be used or I can just paste in the default here. And if I save that and reload my server. Now it should go back to normal. All right. And then 
what's happening here is we're bringing in the document class here and it, this, this class is extending document. This get initial props, if you don't have to, you probably don't have to deal with this. You, you don't even need it. So we could get rid of that if we want and the default will be used. We don't even need the render if you're not going to edit anything here. But basically we have the HTML tags, the head, the main, which is this whole area, our components, our pages, and then next script is any scripts that are being executed uh, by next. Now, if I want to add, let's say, Lang here and we'll set that to EN. If I save that again, I'm going to have to, you know, restart the server here for that to take effect. And if I reload and if I look at my page source, you'll see now we have the Lang attribute here. So you can pass attributes in as props to HTML uh, if you need to add something on the body or something like that. So I just want to show you that in case you need to access this for any reason. Um, you probably don't want to. Uh, in most cases, if you want to add meta tags or anything like that, you have the next slash head to work with with which I showed you, you know, back in uh, index.js. So you just import this and you can add whatever you want to the um, to the head. All right. So now we're going to get into some data fetching from within our pages. We have some special functions that we can use to fetch data and then pass it into our page as props. All right. So we're going to go into our index.js, our home page, and we can add these functions either above the component or below. I'm going to choose to go below here. and we want to export const and then the function. Now there's three separate methods that we can use to fetch data. There's get static props, which is going to allow us to fetch at build time. There's get server side props where we would fetch the data on every request, which is a little slower obviously. And then we also have get static paths to dynamically generate paths based on the data we're fetching. So we're going to use get static props here. And I'm going to make this asynchronous because I am using a sync await here. And I'm going to start off fetching data from a third party API called JSON placeholder. And then after that, I'll show you how we can create our own API routes in the API folder. All right. So let's say const res and we want to await fetch. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and put in HTTPS JSON placeholder. Uh, dot typey code dot com and I'm going to get posts. So it's just this is just like a fake rest API. I've used this in a lot of my videos and courses, so it'll just get a bunch of posts for us. Uh, I'm actually going to limit it, though, to six so we can add a parameter of underscore limit and set that to six. Okay, then I'm going to create a variable here called articles and we want to await the response JSON. So that'll give us the data and the way this get static props works is really cool. Actually, we just return an object with props, which is an object and then whatever data we want to pass in as props, which in our case is going to be the articles we fetch. So now if we go back up here to our function or a component, we can pass in here articles and we should be able to let's just do a console log here of articles and save. And I'm just going to open up my console here. And you might have to reload since we're, we're using get static props. And you can see I get um, six objects here with an ID, a title, a body and a user ID. All right. So what I want to do, though, is is list those out here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And what we can do is go down here. Let's get rid of the H1. And we'll go ahead and take those articles that we had, had fetched and let's call dot map and say for each article. What do we want to show? Let's um, for now, we'll just do an H3. Ultimately, it's going to be a separate component, but let's just do an H3 and we'll show the uh, in here. We'll show the article Oops. article dot title. So we'll save that and now you can see each title is rendering. Now, I actually want to have um, some separate styles for the articles. The grid and the card class in the layout is only going to be used for the article display. So I'm going to grab grid card. Actually, everything from grid down. 
Let's grab that. And I don't think we're not using this code class anywhere, so we could get rid of that as well. And then let's create in styles a new file called article dot module dot CSS. And just paste that in and save. All right. Now, if we want to use those, we can import them. Now, we could leave it like this, but I think what I want to do is create a separate component called article list where we do this map and then have a, an article item component for each individual article. All right. So this is just react stuff. You want to think of everything as a component. So let's say article list js and we'll go ahead and oops. Uh, I want to generate that and I'm also going to import let's say article styles from uh, styles slash article dot module dot CSS. And then I'm going to add to this a class name of article styles dot grid. And what we can do is instead of doing the, this map here, let's cut that. And we're going to be passing in articles as a prop here and then oops, it should be plural. And then here we'll just go ahead and paste that in. All right. And then in our index JS, we'll bring in article list from uh, let's see, you want to go dot dot slash components slash article list and then just put that down here. Article list and we want to make sure we pass in a prop of articles and set that to the articles that were fetched. Okay, we fetch them here. And then we return them as props to this page and then we pass them into this component as props. So if I save, we're going to see the same thing. It, it, the style is a little different because it's applying this grid. Um, we also want to apply the card style to each individual one. So let's create another component here called article item dot JS. And let's create a whoops, let's create a react component here. And we want to import. I'm going to import the styles articles or yeah, we'll call it what I call it here. Article style. Yeah. So that's going to be from dot dot slash styles slash article dot module dot CSS. Okay. I'm also going to import link because we're going to have a link to each specific article. So let's import link from next slash link. And then this is going to take in a prop of a specific article. So make sure that's singular. And we're going to return here a link href. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about nested links later. But as far as where we want this to go, it's going to go to article slash and then we want to use brackets here and ID. Now what we want in that ID is the ID from this specific article. So we can actually say as here and set this to some curly braces and back ticks and say slash article slash and then the article dot ID. OK, and then in here we're actually going to have an a tag. It's not we're not going to use the href that's on the link. But we'll have an a tag and I'm going to give this a class name and we want to use the card class. So in here, let's say articles styles dot card. And then inside here, let's do an H3 and we want to have the article dot title. And I'm just going to use I'm just going to put an arrow here with the ampersand R A R R semicolon. And underneath that we'll have a paragraph and that will have the article body. All right. So if we save that and we go back to article list and bring that in. Article item from dot slash article item and then instead of an H3 we can get rid of that. article item and then we just want to pass in as a prop the individual article. All right, so now we have 
each article showing here and it has that card class and it looks looks pretty decent it, I mean it's basically the same style as you know the default boilerplate if I click this it goes to article slash one right which is the ID of that specific one if I click this one it goes to slash three but I just have a, a 404 page because this page doesn't exist so we can actually create nested routes like this so we can go to article slash and then whatever the ID by going to pages I'm just gonna collapse those and in pages I'm actually gonna create a folder called article and then in that article folder I'm gonna create another folder called brackets uh, we want square brackets with ID so whatever the parameter that we're gonna use and then inside ID the folder ID I'm gonna create an index.js and this is gonna be our single article page so it's gonna be a react component and instead of index though let's call it article and down here as well and let's just put in here this is an article Okay, and if I save that, now you can see no more 404, it's showing this is an article. If I go back and I click on just any of these, the first one here, it's going to show this same page. Now to get that ID, what we could do is we could use the next router. So we could say import and say use router from next slash router. And then we could go Let's go right above this return here and let's say const router equals use router and then we can this is now going to contain any um, parameters that are in the route so we can destructure those we could say let's take the ID let's take that from router dot and it's router dot query. And then I'm going to go down here and instead of saying this is an article, let's say this is article and then let's put in here ID. If I save that, we get this is article one. If I go to this one here. This is article two. I'm going to keep this here and just comment it out so you know that you can do that. And you could, of course, you know, use uh, fetch in, inside of use effect or whatever, but we're going to we're going to do this using the data fetching methods that Next.js provides to pages. So I'm going to start off here with get server side props, which will fetch the data at request at the time of request rather than get static props, which will fetch it at uh, at build time. Um, so we're going to start off with this and then I'm going to show you how we can use something called get static paths to actually dynamically generate all of the paths with all of the data. So let's first do const uh, get server side props and set that to an async function. Now these get server side props and get static props can get passed in a context and that'll allow us to actually get the ID of whatever is in the URL. So here let's do say const res and set that to await fetch and inside here we'll put some back ticks https json placeholder dot uh, type code dot com and then we want to go slash posts slash and then this is where we want the id so whatever the id is of the page which we can get from context dot params dot id all right so now we just want to let's create a variable called article it's going to be a single article and we want to await res.json. That'll give us the article. Remember when we did get static, uh, get static props, we returned the props. We do the same thing here. So let's say props, which is an object. And then inside here, we're going to pass an article, which then we can pass to our page up here, article. And now if I go over here and just say article.id, I should get the same thing. So this is article two. If I go to one, this is article one. I could get the title. I'm actually going to. Um, yeah, let's, let's get rid of this div and just have. Some uh, empty fragments here 
And then inside here, let's have an H1, and I'm going to put the article title. Let's say article.title. I save that. Should show us the title. Good. And then let's go under the H1. We'll have a paragraph. And in this paragraph, we'll do the article.body. Okay, there's the body. I'm just going to put a line break in here. And then I want a link to go back. to to the home page or the article listing. So up here, let's import link from uh, from next slash link and then down here, let's say link href. We want to set that just to go to slash and then we'll say go back. we save that now we have this link we can go back and we can get our articles now it's important to know that each time we're going to these pages is where this is when we're fetching the data right with get server side props so you can keep it like that if you want but you can also use a combination of get static props and get static paths to dynamically generate the paths with the data so i'm going to actually change this now to get static props. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to get an error that says get static paths is required for dynamic static site generated pages. So we need to go down here and doing it this way is going to make it much faster because it's generated. Uh, it's fetched at build time uh, and you can use this in a static website. So we're going to say export const get static paths and it's going to be async. Now we just want to make a request to get all of the posts. So I'm going to just copy these two lines right here. And instead of getting a specific ID, we don't want this context params. We just want slash posts. That's going to give us all of the posts, which I'm calling articles. When I say posts and articles are used interchangeably. So let's call that articles. And then what we need to return from this get static paths is a paths object which is going to look like this. So it's going to be like params and then params is going to be an object with each ID. So let's say ID 1 and it's going to be it needs to be formatted as a string. So then we'd have ID 2 and so on. So we essentially need to take the data that's returned which is an an, an array of article or post objects and turn it into this and pass it into here. So we can do that really with two lines of code. So let's say const IDs, we can take each of the articles map through and let's say for each article we're going to return just the article.id. So that'll give us an array of the article IDs. Now, let's create another variable called paths and let's set that to the IDs which we're going to map through and say for each ID we want to return an object with params and in params we're going to have an object with the id which is going to equal the id but we want to format it as a string so to string we'll do that all right so doing this will actually give us what we need here and it will include every id of every post that's returned from this json placeholder so now we can just do that which will pass in this paths as that value All right, and we're also going to add here fallback is false, which means if we go to something that, you know, doesn't exist in in the data, it's going to return a 404 page. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now what should have happened is it generated all the paths for us. So if I go to home, if I go to this one here, we're seeing, you know, the the article with the ID of 2. Now, notice we only have 6 here that we can click on, right? The last one here has the ID of 6. However, if I go to my URL up here and I go to article 20, it's going to get me article 20 because what happened is it generated all the paths for all the articles slash posts, whatever you want to call them. All right, which is really cool and we can actually export a static website with all of this data that came from that API.
In fact, what I want to do now is show you how we can generate a static website using what we've created here. All right, so I'm going to just going to close up this stuff for now. I'm going to get into the, the, the API routes after, but I just want to show you because while, while we can, we're using get static props um, and we're using a third party API that's, you know, it's, it's always running. Um, we can generate a static site. So I'm going to just go to my package.json. And the way that we do this is with the command next export. So when we run next build, it builds for production. Uh, you know, we have this dot next folder, which includes our server and stuff. And when we deploy to, you know, Versal or, or some other host, we deploy everything. Uh, however, when we export, it just goes into a folder called out and it is just a, a static website. So I'm going to add another command here. Well, actually, you know, what we could do is we could just add it on to build. So we'll say next build, but we'll also do double ampersand and then next export. So let's try that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this server right here and say npm run build. And it's going to build for production, like I said, and it's also going to export a static website. All right, so it's built for production. So we could upload all of this to Versal or some and any host that would, you know, handle Node.js. But we also have this out folder, which is a completely static website. Now you want to run this on some kind of server. If you whether it's a CDN or whatever, I'm actually going to use the serve package. So if you don't have it, you can just npm install dash G. So you want to install this globally serve. Uh, oops, I forgot sudo. All right, so now we should be able to just say serve dash s and we want to serve the out folder, which is our static site. And I'm just going to add dash p. So the port, let's do uh, 8000. Just make that a little bigger. All right, so it should be serving our static site. So let's say HTTPS, we want to go to 8000. Whoops, <laughs> not 80,000. And there it is. So this is a static site. If I delete everything right now, except for the out folder, this is still going to run, it's still going to work. And you can see just how fast this is because it's all prefetched and we dynamically generated all of those paths. So now let's stop this and Let's go ahead and run npm run dev again because there's a couple more things that I want to get into. OK, so we'll close that up and this if you deploy to a server, uh, if we look at our git ignore, that out folder is not going to be deployed. OK, so that's that's in your git ignore and we can actually just delete that now. So I want to go into creating API routes. So inside pages, we have this API folder. This is hello.js and we have a, a function that takes in a request and response and we can respond with a specific status code and we can respond with specific data. So if you've ever used Express or, or really any kind of, you know, building any kind of back end REST API, then this is going to look really familiar. So this hello.js we can actually get rid of. So let's delete that. And then in API, I'm going to create a folder called articles and let's create inside that a file called index.js. So basically for every response or every function, we're going to have a separate file and we're only going to have two. We're going to have one to get all articles and one to get a single article. Now, as far as where the data comes from, that could be from from anywhere, really. And you can make database calls in here. Um, for instance, I'm, I'm working on a website right now with Next that uses Prisma, which allows you to interact with, um, you know, a Postgres database or, or MySQL database. And you can use Prisma inside here. You can also use it inside your pages as well. And I plan on doing a video on that. But for now, we're just going to use a, a JavaScript file with some data. So I'm actually going to drag this over to the root of our application 
and I have the repository in the description for if you want to get this. But you can see we just have an ID, a title. I put an excerpt as well, and then the body. And these these titles and this this data is just copied from a blog. So we have this data file. So in our index.js here, let's import this. So we'll, we'll import articles from, and we want to go. Actually, we want to go up three levels into data, and we want to go into Uh, actually, it's just data, data JS. And then let's go ahead and export a function here. We want to export as default. And we're going to call this just handler. And this is going to take in a request response. And all we're doing here is going to we're going to have a status. So res dot status of 200, which means everything is good. And then dot JSON. And we want to attach the articles. All right, that's it. So we're just serving these articles from our API. Now, if I save this and I go over to here, when you create something inside this API folder, it's going to be accessible automatically from API slash. And then we called our resource articles. So let's say API slash articles. And there it is. So we have this data that we can then fetch and do what we want with. And again, this just comes from a file, but this could be from anywhere, SQLite database, whatever. Um, so that's to get all of the articles. Now, I also want to be able to fetch a single article. So to do that, we're going to create another file inside of this API articles and we're going to call it ID within brackets. Okay, so brackets ID dot JS. And I'm just going to copy what we have here because we're using the same data from that file. We want to be able to go to localhost 3000 or whatever slash API slash articles slash ID and get the data for that specific ID. And the way that we can access that is with request dot query dot ID or we can just destructure it since that's the only thing we're using up here. So instead of that, we can just say you know, query and then from here we want ID. So we can do that and then we should just have access to the ID variable. So here let's get rid of that and then we need to filter out the specific article that we want by that ID. So we'll create a variable called filtered and let's set that to our articles. So that's all of our articles, but we want to filter out from that. So we'll say for each article we want to filter where the article dot ID is equal to the ID that's passed in from the request. All right. And then we'll just check for that. So we'll say if uh, let's say if filtered dot whoops, filtered dot length. So if that is greater than zero, then let's send a res dot status of 200 and we'll pass Jason, we're going to pass in filtered. Now this is going to be an array, but we just want the first element in it. So just filtered zero. That'll give us a single article else. So if something goes wrong, then let's do a res dot status. And this is going to be a 404 because it's not found. And then for Jason, we'll just pass a message and we'll say actually let's use back ticks here and we'll say article with the ID of and then we could just pass in the ID is not found. Okay, so let's save that and let's try it out. So we'll make a get request to API slash articles slash one. And there it is. Now, our, as far as our data goes, we have up to what four. So if I try to fetch slash five, I should get my message. And, and this is a 404 response. Okay, and you can use Postman or something with this if you want. So now that we have this this tiny little API set up, let's use this in our in our application here. So I'm going to go to pages. Let's go to our index. And this is where we made our request to JSON placeholder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this here but I'm going to copy it and comment it out and then just paste this in. 
And instead of making my request to JSON placeholder, let's get rid of that. We want to make it to our API. Now, if I if I try to do API slash and then articles like that, and I save that, let's go back home. So it's going to give me an error that says only absolute URLs are supported. So we can't, even though it's on the same, uh, it's on localhost 3000, we still have to add our, you know, an absolute URL. So HTTP localhost 3000, which is, is going to change if you deploy this, right? So what I would do is create a folder, let's call it config, and then we can create index.js in there. And let's create a variable to, to see if we're in development. So we'll set this to process.env, so our, our environment variables, and we want to check the node environment and say if that is not equal to production. Okay, and then here let's export const server and we'll set that we'll say put a ternary here and say if dev then return http localhost port 3000 else then let's make it uh, I don't know https your website.com whatever whatever that's going to be so we'll save that and now we can go back to our index and we can bring that in so up at the top here let's say import server from and that's going to be from dot dot slash config and then down here when we make our request we can just simply pass in here server. All right, so we'll save that. And now you can see that it works. These articles are actually being fetched through our API, which ultimately is just coming from a JavaScript file. But of course, that could be from anywhere. Now, if I click on one of these, it's still going to show me the, the content from JSON placeholder, because if we go into our pages article and then, you know, in our ID file or folder, the index.js, we're still fetching from from a JSON placeholder. So again, I'm going to copy both of these and then just comment them out. And let's go right above and paste these in and just fetch from our API. Now we do need the server uh, from the config. So I'll just copy. I'll just type it out. So up here, let's say import server. And that's going to be from and we want to go what do we want to go up couple levels here into oops, go up one more into config. And then down here instead of JSON placeholder and instead of posts because we called it articles. So we'll get rid of that and let's put in server. And then we want to go slash. Uh, I'm sorry, slash API slash articles and then slash whatever the ID in the URL. OK, and then this down here can stay the same. And then we want to do the same thing down here. I'm just going to grab this and instead of this. We'll have that. OK, and then we're going to get the articles. We're going to map through the IDs and create the paths and generate the path. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we're getting the actual data from our API. Click on that. There we go. All right, cool. So the last thing that I want to do is instead of on our all, all our pages right now, if we want to have uh, that's the wrong page, if we want to have a title, custom title, meta tags and stuff like that, then we have to import head on every page. I don't want to have to do that. I want to have a default meta component to put in our layout. So in components, Let's create a new file. We'll call it meta.js, and that's going to be a React component. And I'm going to import head here. So import that from next slash head. And I actually want this to take in some props. So it'll take in a title, let's say keywords. And there's actually third party packages you can use for stuff like this, too. 
next, uh, I think it's next dash SEO is a good one. So description, and then I'm just actually going to paste in what I want to return here. So it's going to be head and then inside head, I'm going to have all this stuff. So basically we have uh, the viewport for responsiveness. We have the keywords, which are going to be the, the props that are passed in the description props, uh, uh, character set UTF eight uh, favicon and then the title. And we can add default props too if we want. So we can say meta dot default props. And let's set that to let's say title. We'll set that to web dev news and then keywords. We'll set that to web development programming and then uh, description. We'll set that get the latest news in web dev. All right. Now let's bring this into our layout. So inside of our layout JS, I'm going to copy that down and bring in meta. And where we want to put this is just right at the top. So right above nav, we'll just say meta. Okay, and then I'm going to get rid of in our pages here. So let's go to our home page, get rid of the head import, get rid of this right here, clean this up, save that. And then we'll go into where else about get rid of that head there and save that. And our articles, let's see, we didn't do that. We didn't do a head there. All right. So now if, if we go over here, you can see we have web dev news as the title about also has web dev news. So every page by default is going to have the uh, default props that we use. Now, if you want something different, like in about, if I wanted to have a different title, then I would import meta here from let's say dot dot slash component slash meta and just put that right here and we could pass in a prop of title and set that to about. So if I save that now we have about and even though it's on the layout, it's not going to repeat twice like it's not going to give us two titles if we look at the description here. So it just basically overwrites it so you can see title about. All right. So for the articles, let's say we click here. I actually want to have the article title as the page title. So what we can do is same thing. We'll copy. Let's go into pages, article ID index, and let's bring in. Bring this in right here. We'll bring in meta and in here, let's say meta and pass in the title of article dot title. OK, so now these titles will be dynamic. What's going on here? Can't resolve. Oh, since we're. It's actually three. All right. So now up here you can see the title of the page is the same title as the article. All right. And if you wanted to add maybe a description, we could do description and we could set that to the article. Remember, there's also an excerpt. We could do that as well. And now if we check the description, you can see the content here. OK, so good for SEO. Um, and on the home page, I think we are we're just outputting the body. But if we wanted to go back to the home page, Actually, not the home page. This is in the article item. Instead of body, we could do excerpt, which is shorter like that. OK, so that's pretty much it. That's uh, all the fundamentals, really. I mean, there might be some stuff that I missed again. Check the documentation and um, hopefully this at least let you know what next is and what it's good for. And you can see the benefits of using it. It's definitely um, you know, it's very popular these days and it makes production a lot easier. 
Um, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this crash course, and I will see you next time.